We're now going to begin our discussion of Merge Sort. Merge Sort is a classic divide and conquer algorithm. That means that it's going to split an array up into some sort of parts and then try to solve a problem by that way. You may have already seen this, but we'll go over the idea of it relatively quickly here. If you have an array that is unsorted, one way to sort this array is to split it into two separate arrays. You could say in the middle, but we'll see whether or not that matters eventually. So we split the array. Once we split the array, we then will sort the two halves. So we sort those two halves. So you have two fully sorted arrays. And now you can merge those things back together, hence the name merge sort, by iterating over both of them at the same time and putting in the correct values. Then you merge these together. And we'll look a little bit about how the specifics of that work in a second. But that's the idea. You can sort two things separately and then merge them back together. Well, how do you sort those two things? You can sort them using merge sort. So this is a recursive algorithm that will sort an array by recursively splitting it and then slowly merging all of these splitted parts back together. So that's the idea behind merge sort. Let's see how that's implemented. We should have that above us here. So the actual code for merge sort, which is in the top left here, is relatively straightforward. If the array has elements, we're sorting between i and j, which means that there should be some elements in the array. Then we find the midpoint, and then we merge sort the left half and merge sort the right half. That's the split and sort, and then we merge those back together. So you take an array, split it in the middle, sort both halves, then merge it back together. So that's the idea behind merge sort. We have this sort of auxiliary function copy, which we really don't need too much. It's a specific of how we want to implement this. We then have merge, which is where most of the heavy lifting here will occur. Merge, what this function does is it will copy all of the elements from the first part of A and all of the elements from the second part of A. So this works by taking those two arrays and creating two copies of them, L and R. And then it will just run through L and R and add the correct value back to A. So what this is going to do is it's going to split the array and then merge them back together. The reason we need to copy this is that it's really hard. You can try to find out this if you want. You can Google what's called in place merge. It's very, very hard slash impossible, depending on how you count that, to do this without copying the array, which is one downside to this that we'll discuss in a little bit. That you can't do this without creating quite a bit of additional memory in the problem. So that's the rough idea. Split the array into two halves, sort both halves, then merge it back together. Well, how long does this take? That's the natural question. We're going to analyze this kind of like we did with binary search, but we're going to first define the size. We're going to let n equal j minus i plus 1 for merge sort. And then we need to do something similar with merge because this algorithm is not strictly recursive. It makes two recursive calls highlighted in light blue, but then it also makes a call to merge and merge is over here. So we're going to have to find out the runtime for merge. Copy takes time proportional to whatever we're copying. All it does is it copies the things from A into B, and that's it. So this first thing here will take that midpoint minus first plus one, is what we will count the time, just like we did before. Similarly, we'll have last minus mid p plus one plus one so that's how many times each of those iterates if you go over you can look at the code it just runs i to j when arguments for i i to j so it doesn't take that long similarly the the loop down here go is last minus first plus one iterations and if we were to add all this up a bunch of things cancel for us i will leave that for you to try but the total time here is actually two times last minus first plus one because both algorithms run over the entire array from first to last. So it runs over it twice. Therefore, it runs that many times and every single operation takes constant time. So the run time for this method will be two times last minus first times C. So let's go back to the actual merge sort code and see what happens with the merge call. Well, the merge call has first and last being i and j respectively. So that one line of code there takes two times
times j minus i plus 1 times c time. And if you remember, that is exactly what n was. So this takes 2cn time. So we have to copy everything, and then we also need to do the merge process. So that's the cost for merge. That's our non-recursive work. We then need to figure out the sizes of the recursive calls. So the first recursive call, let's try to figure out the size of that. Just to make our lives easier, we're going to highlight those in different colors and try to keep a consistent color scheme here. So the first one I'm going to highlight in purple, and the next one I'm going to highlight in green. And we're going to compute the sizes of the green and purple recursive calls down below. So for the purple recursive call, the size there is, we said the size for merge sort was the third argument minus the second argument plus one. So it's going to be mid p minus i plus one. So this is mid p minus i plus 1, which should look really similar to what we did with binary search as well. Mid p was i plus j divided by 2. So i plus j divided by 2 minus i plus 1. Combine everything into a single fraction and you get j minus i over 2 plus 1, which is really, really, really close to n over 2, just like we did before. Just so we can have it all sort of organized nicely here, let us try and move our drawing down a little bit, and then we're going to try to compute the size of the green recursive call. So we want to compute the size of the green recursive call, which was j minus mid p plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to j minus mid p, which is i plus j over 2, which is equal to, if we collect together all of our like terms, that is j minus i over 2, which is approximately n over 2. In fact, if you go chug through the specifics, the exact specifics of this problem, you can find out that one of these is n over 2 rounded down and one of them is n over 2 rounded up, and then things will cancel out in a nice way. We aren't going to sort of fiddle with the details of that because, again, the floor functions become a bit tedious. But if you wanted to, the top one here is actually going to be n over 2 ceiling, and the bottom one is going to be n over 2 and that's if you're dealing with both the floor in mid P and the exact specifics of what's happening here. Again, not particularly important. We're not going to use that one in our analysis, but it is worth mentioning. So we have the sizes of the recursive calls, which are n over 2 and n over 2. We have the cost of the non-recursive work, which was 2CN. And we have one other thing which occurs, which was computing mid P it takes constant time. So we need to write down our base case and we need to write down our recurrent solution. Then we can try to proceed from there. So let us try that. Our base case was i less than j, just like we did before. Let's see if we're going to rearrange that. That's going to stop when i equals j, which is j minus i equals 0. Okay, add 1 to both sides. That's j minus i plus 1 equals 1, which is n equals 1. That's our base case. So this is for trying to compute the size of the base case. So our base case for our recursion is going to be t of 1 is equal to some constant c1. That is our base case, and maybe I'll delete my little scratch work here just for myself. And after I have that base case, I need to write down the recurrence. Well, the recurrence was I had 2CN for the non-recursive work, plus we had two recursive calls. That's a little odd. thing was not too bad. The first one is a T of N over 2, because that's the size. The next one is a T of N over 2. So we have T of N over 2 plus T of N over 2, which is also known as 2 T of N over 2. So we're going to write that as t of n is equal to 2cn plus 2t of n over 2. Now that we have a recurrence relation, all that remains is to analyze it and determine the running time. 